No production vehicle currently sold in America uses less energy on the highway to travel a certain distance than this, the Lucid Air. This is it, the most efficient on the highway. And one of the most interesting things about this vehicle is the powertrain. Arguably, the electric motor used in this car is the most advanced electric motor in a production car today. But we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about something far more boring. Tesla, no, I'm just kidding. We're gonna talk about packaging. And with any other car, talking about packaging would be extraordinarily boring. And maybe it'll be extraordinarily boring in this video too. However, Lucid has made the discussion about packaging somehow interesting. Oh yeah, hello everyone and welcome. Okay, well, I'm about to brag about the packaging and yet that was a pretty tight squeeze. So the reason why I wanna talk about packaging with this vehicle is basically everything about it, every single component is designed with packaging in mind. And there are many benefits to packaging. I wanna talk about three of them in this video, some obvious, some much less obvious, but we're going to start with one that is very obvious and that is cargo space. And so just looking here at this front trunk to give you an idea of how good of a job they did, and of course, you know, I was inside of it. Uh, this is a five gallon bucket. You could fit several of these in here and comparing this to the Tesla Model S, uh, that is a car which has extraordinarily good packaging. Tesla does an extremely good job at packaging uh, and yet this is just a leap ahead of that. Um, this is three times, over three times, the volume of the front trunk in the Tesla Model S, the current generation Tesla Model S. It is an extraordinary effort that they have done to have this much space up front. And if you look at cars like the Mercedes EQS, no front trunk. If you look at the BMW iX, no frunk. If you look at the Volkswagen ID4, no frunk. And this is just lazy engineering, right? It's just lazy design. They could be there. And you might say, okay, what is what are some possible reasons why they might not have a front trunk? And I'm trying to think through different scenarios and kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. And I really have landed on, it's just lazy design. Reason being, okay, let's say maybe by removing this and not having this useful space and having direct access to components, we have a slight edge on maintenance. Not a huge edge realistically because it doesn't take that long to get this thing out and then access components, but a slight edge on maintenance, right? Maybe that's why it's done. Well, look at the vehicles and look at the design and then you very obviously find it's not for a maintenance reason, right? Like if you look at the Mercedes EQS, they don't even want you popping the front hood. In fact, it requires tools to do so. And the reason why they don't have a frunk, uh, you know, they have a large air filter up front, right? Well, Tesla has a large air filter up front. They still have a frunk. And with that air filter that Mercedes uses, there's three tabs. So you have to have three hands if you wanna pull it out. I'm sure there's some specialized tool for doing it, uh, but it's made uh, the opposite of maintenance friendly, the EQS front trunk. They really don't want you opening that front hood. And then look at, okay, the BMW i4, for example. So this is a car where you pop the front and you're like, okay, well, maybe their packaging just didn't allow the space for this kind of thing, to have this there. And then you remove that engine cover, that front trunk cover, and you realize there's all this empty space that isn't used. I could fit a carry-on bag in the empty space in the front of the BMW i4. It is just lazy design. The space is there. It could be useful space. It could be usable that you can store things up front. And one of the huge benefits of storing things up front like this, people say like, oh, why do I need more cargo space? It's like, well, why don't you want more cargo space? First of all, I'm passionate about this subject. But also, one of the things I really like about front trunks is that they're very secure in comparison to just leaving stuff in your car or in the trunk. So anybody can smash a window, grab stuff real quick. With this close, you can't smash a window and then suddenly gain access to the front. You gotta grind your way in, take a cutting tool, and get your way in here, right? That's gonna take some time uh, and it's gonna be very loud and noisy and disruptive versus just smashing a window, grabbing something and running. That's very quick, right? So I really like front trunks because they're a very secure way of storing things uh, and that is a you know common feature that is coming along with this new wave of electric cars that I really like. And yet there's so many electric cars out there that don't put in the effort to do it. It's just pure lazy design and it's such a bummer to see, especially with these dedicated EV platforms coming out, they're brand new, and yet they haven't even thought to incorporate space up front. 
Now, a few additional comments on how Lucid was able to achieve this, and again, it goes back to basically every component needs to think about packaging. So they basically redesigned headlights. We'll get into that a little bit later. This is a very sophisticated front end of the vehicle. They have these vortex intakes, which are really compact, but help spread that air evenly over the radiators. You've got LiDAR, you've got radar, you've got all kinds of different sensors, all kept in this very narrow window up front. Uh, and then when you get to the bulkhead here, You've got your tiny electric motor, yet extremely powerful. Your different electronic components all kept in a very clean packaging design so that you have all of this space that you can use here. And you might say, well, why not just make the car smaller if I'm wasting all this space and just using it for storage? Well, this space must be here. For crash purposes, you have to have a distance between the driver and the occupants and the front of the vehicle. You need all of this space so that you have that crumple zone to slow down the acceleration when you hit something and give yourself time for the passengers to be safe. All right, so there's a massive frunk, but there is also a massive trunk. And so an interesting comparison, if you look at this versus a Mercedes S-Class, large luxury sedan, this is a foot shorter. The Mercedes S-Class is a whole foot longer in length. And yet this with the trunk plus the front trunk combined has two and a half times the cargo space as the Mercedes S-Class, a much longer vehicle. So then naturally you might think, well, okay, the sacrifice is in the passenger space, which leads us to our second part of packaging, passenger space. So I'm gonna open up the front here, open up the rear. One of the cool things about this you'll notice is that the door is almost at a 90 degree angle, so you have really easy ingress into the vehicle there. So I have this seat adjusted for me up front, and I'm about six, one and a half. And as you can see, I've got plenty of space for my legs here, plenty of space to sit in this space. And as I get out and then go behind me, again, six, one and a half, 1.87 meters, you can see there's an extraordinary amount of leg room back here. So what's really interesting about this headroom, it could be a little better, let's be honest, but the leg room is extraordinary. So what's really interesting about this is versus the S-Class, which again is a vehicle that's a whole foot longer and it has a 10 inch longer wheelbase. Lucid says if you measure the interior from where your foot rests on the front footwell there to the back, of your butt here sitting in this seat, that is two inches longer. So the inside of this car is longer even though the whole vehicle is a foot shorter and the wheelbase is 10 inches shorter. So two inches longer interior yet in a smaller car. That is incredibly clever packaging. All right, now the third benefit regarding packaging I want to discuss is efficiency. And I'm going to throw in a fourth, which is handling. And yes, this is a very heavy vehicle. So don't get me wrong, that has its uh, you know challenges in regards to handling. However, if you make a vehicle smaller, if you have the weight of that battery lower, these are things that benefit you from a handling standpoint, make you more agile. So packaging does matter in making your vehicle smaller and thus giving you better handling. Now, regarding efficiency, the name of the game is about shrinking the exterior of this car, right? So if you have a giant truck, you know, big block of air uh, that it's pushing out of the way as it drives down the highway, this is very aerodynamic design. And on top of that, you've shrunk in the outside as much as you possibly can while still giving the occupants plenty of space to give yourself the smallest hole of air that you have to punch out as you're driving down the highway. So really efficient uh, aerodynamic design as well as small outer packaging and that gives you really good energy consumption on the highway. Again, this being the best vehicle currently sold in America as far as efficiency on the highway. Now again, all of this packaging is made possible by looking at all of the components and then just shrinking them as much as you can. So super energy dense electric motors, tiny inverters, they've done so much to make sure every component is small so that you can shrink everywhere that you don't want stuff and then give the maximum amount of space to the occupants and storage. All right, so we're talking about efficiency, and one of the ways that you can improve aerodynamic efficiency is through the use of a diffuser. Now, historically, plenty of car companies have put diffusers on their cars, right? But then you'll look underneath and you see, oh, maybe it doesn't even have a flat underbody, and then the diffuser starts way back here and then has this really steep angle, and it doesn't end up being all that useful. Well, instead of starting here, Lucid starts their diffuser way up here on the right side of this blue piece of tape. 
So the diffuser starts here, has this really gradual slope as you get towards the back of the vehicle. That increases the static pressure at the back of the car, which reduces lift and reduces drag, which is what they're going for. So it's really impressive. And one of the crazy things about this is, because they start here, that means the battery pack has to be raised slightly, right? So the battery pack is designed with this shape so that you raise up the cells at the back of the battery pack in order to allow for the diffuser to start here. And when you look underneath, it's a very gradual amount, right? It's nothing crazy, but they're starting that diffuser here rather than way in the back to improve efficiency. And it just seems like this sacrifice that, you know, that they didn't have to make from a complexity standpoint. You would feel like every other car company out there would be like, whatever, make the battery pack flat, get it to here, then start the diffuser. And yet they didn't, they go the extra mile and they start the diffuser here just for that little bit of efficiency gain in aerodynamics. Now, as I've mentioned, there's so much effort that goes into each individual component to optimize for packaging. And one of the great examples of this are the headlights. So there's actually six modules on each side, 12 total. This center module right here on the inside being your high beams, you can see it's shining right at the lens. And then these other five on the outside here are your low beams. And so what's interesting about this is that each of these five modules here have like 900 optical channels. So about 9,000 across the front end of this with your low beams here. And these optical channels are allowing you to alter the light. So you can choose, you know, do you want it to be dark in this area, bright in this area, and choosing where you shine that light and how intense that light is. And so what Lucid says the big driver behind this is, is that it allows them to have a very homogeneous lighting in front of the vehicle. So as you're driving down the road, everything looks very evenly lit because you can increase light in some spots, decrease in other spots, and have it be this nice balanced out light in front of you. And another really cool thing about these is that although this is solid state, so these modules don't actually pivot, you can turn the light into the corner using these optical channels that are part of these lenses. And so these optical channels can shine that light as you turn the wheel, it's turning that light into the corner so you can better see into that corner. And then as you turn back, that light comes back with it and reduces the amount that you're shining out to the outside there. So you're always keeping the lights pointed and giving you this homogeneous view in the direction that you are driving. And so as cool as these are from a lighting standpoint, they're also extremely compact, which again gives you flexibility in the design of the front end of this vehicle, as well as giving you more space for things like this frunk. All right, well, looks like we spent all our time talking about frunks instead of what it's actually like to drive. I'm as disappointed as you are. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.